Hello everyone. The birds are fairly relaxed at the moment, but unfortunately we do have a little bit of Zerka virus, so young bird sickness in the loft. So I'm going to do some cleaning, and then we'll come and talk about it. So I'll start up here with the breeders. If you do just want to look at the young birds with the Zerka virus, I'll leave a timestamp in the description, you can jump ahead to that. But as you guys probably know, Zerka virus is a disease that mostly affects young birds. So over here with the old birds, the breeders, uh, there's not much, not many health issues over here. We'll have a quick look at the young birds. So I am just about finished breeding. These guys freshly hatched yesterday. So there's two little babies in there. Another pair a bit older. This one's going to be really, really pretty. This one's going to be a red reduced, just like the dad. So I'm pretty excited about that. Really looking forward to seeing her when she grows up. And her brother, of course, is going to be nice and dark, just like the mother. One more baby there. This will be the very last pair of eggs here. These ones were laid on New Year's Eve. And I wasn't actually gonna let this pair go for one more round, but I thought if they lay before New Year's Day, I'll let them keep the eggs, and they did. So this will be the last pair of babies for the 2021 breeding series. There is a little mess on the floor. I think it was Mercer who asked about the eggs from the almond hen. I've actually put them under this pair just because I didn't want them to pet up outside. So these ones will hatch fairly soon and hopefully we get a little almond baby. Over here on this side, there's eggs in these two pairs. They should hatch soon. These are both sprinter pairs. These babies are growing up and there's one last pair of eggs in here. And then last of all is these guys. And I'm not entirely sure what to do with these guys. So if you remember, these were for the long distance ring race. And this pair laid two eggs. But unfortunately one of them got smashed. This guy decided to fight them. So I put in another egg off the floor, which was laid by the recessive red hen. Uh, and unfortunately, their actual egg is not fertile. Only the recessive red egg is. And I'm not entirely sure if I want to raise one more recessive red baby. I'll have a think about it. We'll see what happens. But that's the breeders. Let's go and look at the young racing birds. So as I was saying, we do have a bit of Zerka virus or young bird sickness in this section. Most of the birds you can see look pretty good. It's actually a disease that really only clinically affects about 5% of the loft. So I have had three young birds die, and there's two more outside, I'll have a look at them in a second, who are fairly sick, but the rest of them aren't too bad. The reason a lot of people call it young bird sickness is because it's a virus that really attacks immature immune systems. So because these young birds, they don't have a mature immune system, they do have a bit of trouble fighting it off. But one of the really <laughs> insidious things about the disease is it actually suppresses the immune system as well, which means they're far more susceptible to other diseases whilst they've got Zerka virus. So I don't know if you can hear any sneezing in the background, but there is a bit of uh, respiratory going through these birds. And actually one or two of them actually have pigeon pox as well, which is a little bit frustrating because I haven't had a chance to vaccinate yet. As far as treatment goes, I'm not actually giving these birds any drugs for a couple of reasons. First is it's a virus and antibiotic drugs just don't affect viruses, so that's not going to do anything. Uh, the second is these birds still need to develop their natural immune system. So a lot of people get confused, a lot of the overseas viewers, because over here in Australia we do things quite a bit differently. I'll explain quickly. So it's January now, it's the 6th of January I think, and the first race is on the 28th of May I believe, so that's four and a half months away. These birds are all about to molt. They've actually started dropping their flights already. They'll be finished molting around the end of March, beginning of April, and that's when we'll start really putting in the training work and start tossing them. And it's not until then that we'll actually start treating them with antibiotics or canker medications. Until then, we really want them to develop their natural immune system. So the only treatment that the birds have been getting is some probiotics. And we'll have a look at that after we have a look at the young birds outside who are a bit sick. So this little one is the sickest at the moment, and I honestly wouldn't be surprised if this one dies, unfortunately, which is a real shame because it's quite a well-bred pigeon. I'll see if I can give you guys a look down the throat. So it's a bit hard to see at the moment, but you might be able to see the chunky mucus in the throat. That's not canker. So that isn't canker. It's actually a result of the Zerka virus. Another thing you can see that She's quite thin, and it's passing a lot of bile. That's because the disease suppresses the appetite, so she's not eating very much. And just in general, she has quite a lack of vitality. It's mostly because, like I said, Zerka virus suppresses the immune system, 
which means not only do they have a viral infection, they also struggle to deal with the rest of any pathogens they might pick up, which for a young pigeon is a lot of things. I'm really not sure how the circovirus got into the loft. I have bought a few new race birds in from different sources, but they all came from fairly reputable lofts. So I'm not sure if it came in through that, or I have had a lot of strays landing with the race birds as they have been out flying recently. So again, it could have been that. But it's here, just gotta deal with it. I'm gonna go inside and mix up some seed with the probiotics, and I'll show you guys how I do that. All right, well first, welcome to my kitchen. Here's the probiotics that I'm gonna use. I'm not sure if this particular brand is available overseas or if it's just an Australian brand, but the important thing is it's a bird origin or avian origin probiotic. And I know a lot of people use probiotics that are made for humans or for dogs or cats, but I think for the best results, using one that's made for birds is pretty important. So basically what probiotics are, are genuine living bacteria that live symbiotically inside the bird and help with health and well-being and nutrition and digestion and all those kind of things. And the different bacterial species are adapted to different animal species. So a bacteria, even like a lactobacillus that's good for humans, might not be great for birds. So these ones are isolated from birds, made for birds. That's why I like to use these. I am also going to mix in some vitamin and mineral powder under the seed. Uh, it's good for the birds and especially when they're not well like this, it's definitely not going to hurt. So here's the grain for the day. They're still in a fairly heavy mix. It's mostly because I'm still breeding and this is the breeding mix. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on the seed. So this is sunflower oil. You can also use peanut oil, uh, any of the real light cooking oils really. So I'll just put a real little bit of oil on the seed. Just enough to make it just a little bit wet. And then I'll go some of the probiotic. That's a bit more than I'd usually use. It's just because they are a bit sick at the moment and they need the boost. I'm putting a bit more on. And then also the powder. And now I'll just give it a mix around. All right, now we have a nice probiotic and vitamin mineral fortified food. We're gonna give it to the young birds. All right, well, I've just mixed up their feed. I'm not gonna let these guys out today for two reasons. The first is because of their young bird sickness, I don't wanna stress them too much. I'm just gonna leave them in here and let them sort of get over their sickness. And the second is that I've had a bit of trouble getting them back in recently. So I'm gonna use this time to my advantage a little bit and try and train them to the whistle a bit better whilst they're still inside the water. I did also forget to mention that there's also probiotics in the water, not just on the food. And with the circovirus, one thing to keep an eye out for is birds that don't wanna eat. So this fantail, I think there's one more over here, yes, this opal hen. The birds that don't wanna eat are some of the ones that you do kind of want to worry about a little bit when it comes to the circovirus because like I said outside it does uh, suppress the appetite a little bit. Anyway whilst these guys are enjoying their food you can click over here maybe over here and watch another video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. By the way check out my pumpkins maybe I should start a gardening channel as well there's a nice big one in here somewhere there's plenty of pumpkins growing